so in today's video we are going to learn about the interior of duodenum in the last video we have studied about the four parts first second third and fourth part of the duodenum so in this video we have removed the upper wall of the duodenum and you can see the posterior surface of the duodenum okay and you will see there numeral folds are there mucosal folds are there in the duodenum all around except the first part of the duodenum okay so this is the first part of the duodenum you will not see any mucosal fold okay it means the first part of the duodenum is smooth and if you will see the barium meal x-ray of the abdomen so the first part of the duodenum will present like a triangular shadow okay like a triangular bulge okay and this is known as the duodenal cap what is this duodenal cap so in this picture also you can identify the duodenal cap so we have this triangular area this is known as the duodenal cap what is this this is the first smooth part of the duodenum so we have seen the duodenal cap so what we have to remember in the first part okay number one as you know the full duodenum is retroperitoneal and this is not mobile it is a fixed part but only initial part if you will see initial of the uh, first part of the duodenum it is intraperitoneal and it is freely mobile okay so first part we have seen this is intraperitoneal and it is freely mobile second part we have to remember that is it is supplied by the end arteries okay so initial 2.5 cm it is supplied by the end arteries and the first initial part we have seen the duodenal cap it means it is devoid of it is devoid of mucus folds okay it is devoid of circular mucus folds one more thing you have to remember the first part is more prone to ulcer so it means what duodenal ulcers are commonly occurs at the first part of the duodenum so i will write here ulcer and also you will see the duodenal cap so these are the features you have to remember in case of the first part of the duodenum now we are coming toward the second part of the duodenum so second part will extend from the superior duodenal flexor till the inferior duodenal flexor and if you will see there are number of folds are there there are these are the circular mucosal fold and these folds will start from the second part of the duodenum and these circular folds they are known as the valves of kerkering so in the interior of the second part of the duodenum we have to study two main things one is major duodenal papilla okay and second one is minor duodenal papilla what are these so this opening this you can see this is the major duodenal papilla what is this it is a conical projection you can see this is a, this one is the conical projection here on the posterior medial wall of the second part of the duodenum and if you will see the distance from the pylorus we have this pyloric part so distance from the pyloric pylorus we have the it is about 8 to 10 centimeter from the pylorus so as i told you there is a conical opening so what will open into this okay so hepatopancreatic duct will open into the major duodenal papilla so this we have to remember and how this hepatopancreatic ampulla or duct is formed by these two structure one you can see this one this is the bile duct okay this is the bile duct here and second one is this duct this is the pancreatic duct so these two structure will meet at this point and they will form the hepatopancreatic ampulla and that will open into this part that is the 
major duodenal papilla now we are coming toward the minor duodenal papilla so where is the minor duodenal papilla this portion this opening is for the minor duodenal papilla and if you see the distance from the pylorus it is about 6 to 8 cm 6 to 8 cm from the pylorus and what will open into this so you will see the opening of the accessory pancreatic duct so this small duct you can see this one this is the small duct this is the accessory pancreatic duct so this will open into the minor duodenal papilla apart from that also you will observe observe this opening and above this opening we have the this fold this fold is like a arch it is forming like a arch above the opening of the major duodenal papilla and this arch like structure is known as arch of plica semicircularis or also known as the monk's hood if you remember this this is the monk's hood so sometimes in the viva we can ask what is monk's hood so you should remember it is a semicircular arch above the major duodenal papilla and also you will observe one other structure that is known as the plica longitudinalis so what is this if you will see the word longitudinal means i will show like this so we have this the major duodenal papilla and just below that these are the longitudinal folds are there and these folds are known as plica longitudinalis so this was about the interior of the uh, duodenum first part and second part they are very very important so now we will see the arterial supply so duodenum if you will see the developmentally it is developing from foregut and also from the midgut so uh, we have seen the opening of the major duodenal papilla that is a landmark above that part uh, is developing from the foregut and below is developing from the mid gut so we have the two set of artery supplying the duodenum so in the upper part we have the celiac trunk okay artery of the foregut and below we have the superior mesenteric artery this is the artery of the mid gut so above that level it is supplied by the superior pancreatico duodenal artery and this artery is a branch of gastro duodenal artery and gastro duodenal artery already you know it is coming from where from the common hepatic artery okay so superiorly supplied by the superior pancreatico duodenal artery and below this level it is supplied by the inferior pancreatico duodenal artery and inferior pancreatico duodenal artery if you will see it is a branch from where superior mesenteric artery out of that the first part will also receive some additional supply from the right gastric artery okay this is the right gastric artery giving some branches and this artery you will see this is the supra duodenal artery the supra duodenal artery is also known as artery of wilkie so supra duodenal artery other name is artery of wilkie so these are the artery supplying the duodenum one more thing we will add into this we have the suspensory muscle of the duodenum what is suspensory muscle or or also known as ligament of traits okay so what is this and what is its attachment we will see so if you'll see this we have the duodeno jejunal flexor okay and this is the esophagus on both side of the esophagus we have the right crust of the diaphragm and we have the left crust of the diaphragm so this you can see this green color structure what is this this is the suspensory muscle of the duodenum or ligament of traits what is this it is the fibromuscular band okay which will support the duodeno jejunal flexure and it is arising from where from the right crust of the diaphragm arising from the right crust of the diaphragm and after rising it is passing downwards and going toward this point what is this duodeno jejunal flexor and anteriorly if you will see there is a pancreas so it is passing behind the pancreas 
and if you will divide this ligament suppose this ligament is starting from this point and this point we will divide this ligament into three part now so this is the upper part this is the middle part and this is the lower part so we are having the three types of muscle fiber in the suspensory muscle of the duodenum so in the upper part we have the striped muscle fiber and elastic fibers in the middle part and smooth muscle fiber in the lower part so we have three types of fibers in the upper part what type of fiber are there striped fiber or also the skeletal muscle fiber in the middle part elastic muscle fiber or elastic fibers sorry and in the lower part we have the smooth muscle fiber so this was about the duodenum thank you so much for watching the video see you in the next video Thank <music> you.